Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at episode four of the Full Experience Podcast live at the H. Caramy headquarters. And guess what? We have Houston Heat star, professional gamer, almost professional, <laughs> Ronnie Dizaz in the house. What's up, Ronnie? What's going on, baby? Number four on the team and number four podcast. I know. How crazy did it work out like that? You no, know, it's just destiny. The spirits, destiny. They wanted it like The universe that. unfolded as it should. That's so crazy. All right. Tell the people what happened. You flew in today from Chicago? Yes, sir. So uh, I was in cold Chicago. Dude, it's seven degrees seven seven is it snowing it's frozen over so the weather's nicer in cali so so it's 72 here <laughs> Dude. and it's seven degrees there seven degrees yeah i would freak i went to go put my car my uh, my luggage in the car and like i was freezing and it was only like 10 feet <laughs> And I walk back inside. I go, oh, I'm so glad I'm going to California. So, so this is like a like a dream out here with this weather, huh? Oh my god, I love it. I and love and it. also playing paintball, like you can't really. I mean, practice has to suck in that type of weather, no? Like, what do you do out there? How do you play? Oh, we. I drove two and a half hours with actually Drew Templeton picked me up. Uh, Shout out Drew week. Templeton. Shout out Drewby. Uh, he picked me up uh, last week, and we we drove to Wisconsin to play in an indoor. At an indoor, yeah, but is it still? It's still kind of cold in the indoor, right? It's not like playing outdoor in Cali. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely not. No, it's 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 the best here. <laughs> it's the best here. Let's Wait, just put it that way. Let, let's dive into that a little bit before you before we get into why you're out here in the new Six Series. Shout out, um, yeah. So having to play like you also have some Russian guys that are freezing in Russia. Yeah, yeah. So to play to practice a lot. So you're driving pretty far. There's nothing real close. Right. So there used to be a field called O'Hare paintball by me. It was like 30 minutes away. Yeah. And that was like a dojo. Like the owners basically gave me the keys and he's like, yeah, just come train here whenever you want. No way. And then they closed the place and then I had nothing. So this winter has been very rough for paintball. Plus on top of that, I had COVID over the holidays. Oh, did you? Yeah. It was just hard for me to do anything. Did you get, did it take you out? Like Joe Rogan's like three days, I'm good. It it got me for a while. Yeah. Like you had it too. I did. I'm good now, but it, it took me down for like 13 days. <laughs> oh my god! Same same thing though. Did like it? A week and a half, like like three or four of the days, I was just out, like out, yeah. out, like bad. Like this is terrible. And then like after that, I was just like getting my respiratory back up, and then just trying to feel back to being normal. And then yeah. then obviously like the quarantine stuff. Like people who say like, I mean, I don't want to get too crazy with this, but it's like people who say like COVID this, COVID that. It's like you just don't want it. Like yeah. Then you gotta you gotta not do things. You can't do things. Yeah. Period. That's the problem. It's better to not have it. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, over the, like over the winter, like the only place that's close to me, there's like, like one place that's not like, it's like a carpeted place or it's an injury waiting to happen. And then there's another place that's two and a half hours away. So it's just, you got to pick your battles there. You got to do what you got to do. But normally, um, and that's just you when you want to grind extra, when you have team practices, it's usually in an area where the weather's pretty good or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we usually go to Texas or, uh, Texas or the we we going going to the East Coast. We haven't gone too much here, but we're gonna be coming back probably. Yeah, you guys were out here a lot, and then you've been going to X Factor Paintball Park a lot. It seems like. Yeah, X Factor. We usually like locked in one practice with them every before every event because they have a very like super nice facility and they're a good team. Yeah, I've never been there, but I always hear you guys talking about it. Is it that nice? It's just it's just really nice, and they're a good team to practice. You know, like they'll they'll give you a lot of looks, and they're Alex and them. They're everything's accommodating there. You know, we kind of have our routine going there, so. It's, uh, you know, we're creatures of habit. So yeah. I mean, once we lock into that, it's, it's nice. But and is rainy just like I saw last, uh, last event. I saw rainy giving everyone hell. Does he do that in practice rainy, too? Rainy's a demon. Tyler looked like he was going to kill him. Dude, rainy's a <laughs> demon, dude. Like I'll be, I'll be honest. Like I, I love his competitive drive, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's, it sucks. Can, can we swear on this? Yeah. You can say oh, whatever the cool. fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a motherfucker playing him because like he, he is like that. He's, he's tries to get in your head. He tries to overshoot you. And it's, it's competitive and it's great, you know? So that's why I, I admire his drive to be yeah. the player he is. So it's, it's always a good fight with him, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're all competitors out there. He's just, you know, he's like everyone else, but he's definitely a uh, built a little different when it comes to uh, trying to stir up the pot, you know? Yeah. I saw some fo- dope photos, but I think cause verbal is here right now. And yeah. I saw rainy and Tyler and Tyler's eyes were just staring at him like yeah, yeah, you yeah. son of a bitch. And then I saw another one with Fedorov. So he was, he was poking at Fedorov and he was poking at Tyler, which, you know, it's part of the game. Honestly, but. that match was like, so we had, our, we, we played them in the prelims at World Cup, and then we played them again, but the prelims match, um, I just actually uploaded it on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ronnie D's on. Um, subscribe, yeah, subscribe. Hit the sub. Um, <laughs> I actually uploaded um, it today. It's going to drop tonight whenever this, you know, comes out. But yeah, um, I put out like a whole raw footage, like back and forth match that Rye Guy filmed. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Rye Guy. And uh, 
yeah, like literally shows all the emotion. It's really good. So sick. Yeah, it's like it was one of the most fierce matches I've ever played. Yeah, I wasn't able to get there, but I just from seeing the photos and the videos, it it's looked crazy. it looked yeah. insane. It was insane. I, I felt it. From that at felt home. like the finals match. Yeah, you know, it was so. crazy. Yeah, it was good. It was a good time. Because what uh, you played X Factor and did they beat you? They beat us twice. Right. They beat you twice, yeah. but you played them. It was super close. Then you're going to play them again. You guys were up, yeah. and then they came back at the end. It was yeah, like same crazy. Thing. Like, like they just won each both matches by one point. That's <laughs> so crazy. It's rough. Yeah. Um. So what are you guys thinking? What are you thinking for Houston Heat? You're seeing all these moves. I have to ask you. You saw sure. the Latin Saint stuff. Yes. Yes. What do you think of that? Um. I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great for paintball. Yeah. I think it's good that you know, um, another team with good funding comes into the sport. You know, to shake things up because honestly. It was getting, uh, you know, like like I said, we're all, it, everything's routine, right? But when something like that happens, it it's a tidal wave, and everything changes, and all these dynamics change, and these players do this, so it really um, it makes it interesting. You yeah, know? it tells a story. It shakes stuff up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so like just like how Houston Heat was kind of formed out of nowhere, and they just you know fielded this team with so and so players. You know, the same thing the Latin Saints are doing. It's great. I, I, I admire it. It's good for the sport. It really is. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy when someone comes in and is taking players from like Bart, who, you know, is yeah. like Sarge, who yeah. pretty big dogs. It's like, if you can pull a player from him, that's pretty impressive. That's what I'm saying, dude. So yeah. like, that's, that's good for the sport. It, it breeds, um, a different dynamic to it, you know? Yeah. And like, I think something that paintball needs is more people like that coming into it yeah definitely it'll legitimize it more yeah and like chad said yesterday you know you guys deserve to get you know paid and, sure. and i mean and yeah. pretty well so it's nice you know this ups the ante to hopefully keep getting players paid and paid more so yeah and it, it makes those players on that team now like they have a lot of drive to show out at that first event right definitely same thing for us like you know we don't want the new team to come in and you know yeah the shit out of us so we got to be this on the same level right so, yeah and i asked chad this too so what did you think you know you got tyler Harmon, who's a monster yeah you guys you guys uh, came in, won the first event, and then we had a little, a little uh, no we, wins, but you guys were you guys were up towards the top the rest of the year, right? Uh, last year, yes. We won uh, Philly, so we won the second event. Second event, my bad. Okay, second event. Yes. And then we didn't have a win after that, right? No. What do you think? How does I asked Chad this too, but I'll ask you: What do you think needs to change, or what? What do you think? What do you guys think you need to do different to actually get the first places? I, I mean, I mean, you look at our World Cup performance, you know. It's one point. Yeah. It's a one point difference between going on to the World Cup finals or, you know, going home. Right. So I don't think necessarily we're doing anything wrong. I just think we, as players, need to pull through in those very, very clutch moments. Right. I mean, I, Tyler played phenomenal World Cup like the team did. You know, like we we all even said it from the beginning, like it's one point at a time. Right. And that those one points matter. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if you're up. The match isn't over. Right. So I think it's. um you know, it's it's just going to come down to being at the same page. And pro paintball tournaments are so hard to win when you're as far as consistency. You know, there's yeah. so many factors. Yeah. Um. So I think for us, you know, just we're one point away. Yeah. No, you guys were. I mean, yeah. obviously, the game was so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> the games were so exciting. Exactly. Um. So this is your first time at the H Caramy facility, the new one. You've the been there, old one. Yes. Yes. How, what, what? Tell the people what you think about it. Uh, oh my God, this is definitely. I mean, like I've been seeing the videos and like the. The Instagram stories, and I'm like, oh man, like I'm stoked to come in here. So, Marky actually gave me a tour that's gonna go on my YouTube on the vlog. Well. On yeah. the vlog, um, <laughs> and I'm very excited because it's like I got to see everything and, and experience what it was before, yeah, and then see the change now, seeing the different offices, seeing everybody have their own dedicated workplace, you know, seeing uh, the video editors being in their own studio dojo, like, yeah, it's just really cool. And then you set up the podcast, like, I'm it's just exciting for you guys. You know, I'm happy for you guys. You know, yeah, no, we're stoked. And yeah. we're, we're definitely uh, putting in the extra effort to make sure we do everything and do everything proper, yeah. you know, and doing it good. Yeah. Just and like the, when we do the podcast, we do it right. You know, when we do our videos, we do it right. For like, the people out there, I mean, like we were at, we were at a very, very, very nice facility. Uh, you know, they have their warehouse in the back, but then their offices and then the podcast area, like everything is so clean and nice and Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Give it six months. It's going to be destroyed. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Yeah. Um, sure. And then what? So we had a little, you know, you're out here shooting a little. What were you shooting today? Uh, so um, I, uh, I flew in specifically because I've been working with you guys for a while. Um, you know, I've been on heat and sponsored by you guys for a good while. Um, and finally, I'm able to drop my signature series with you guys. Yeah, you've been doing your merch, which has been dope. Yeah, we're like, well, sure. let's do an official like HK uh, Dizon Docs, a Ronnie Dizon one. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like a lot of 
of the people who follow me and support me. I've always been asking, when am I going to do the signature series with HK? Yeah. And I just needed to get the idea flowing of it just being right, you know? Yeah. And uh, obviously I've been doing my merch, but that stuff was kind of just like casual wear, you know? I kind of wanted to stay separate from the paintball stuff. That way I can, when I drop the paintball stuff, it's exclusively with y'all, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's done proper. Um, so yeah, we have four pieces that came out, um, are coming out. And it's uh, it's like a T-shirt, a uh, a long sleeve, the TRK. Airs. The TRKs, which are fire, fire by the way, yeah, with the favorite. blossom print, dude. Yeah. You you crush this. Uh, you have a good eye. All your stuff always looks real good. Thank you, I appreciate it. And, and this this line is fire. Yeah. Don't and tell Chad, but I think it's a little bit better. <laughs> Just kidding. They're all good. Uh, we got the headband as well. I mean, everyone's got their own theme, right? No, nah, for then, sure. Uh, for me, I wanted to do the cherry blossom thing because last year I kind of fell in love with the pattern. Um, and then, like from my understanding, cherry blossom season doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. So the whole um, meaning behind it is, is like you know life short you know sick uh you know we've you know clearly we've lost some friends in yeah. the past few years you mm -hmm. know um rp too you know we tim yeah Dreamy, you know yeah. um so tim and marcus i, I kind of want to just put that out there like you know life short you know so is uh the things you do with the people that you love you know mm -hmm. so um that's kind of the meaning behind it that's sick i love that right and then i just wanted to put the twist with uh with the hk army skull that i've admired you know my whole life um, to put my initials in it. I did a headband like a long time ago in 2018 with it. So I wanted to just kick it and run with it. And, uh, and then we have, uh, the Japanese kind of vibe with it, you know, the yin yang, yeah. like colors with the black and white. And then the, uh, it says gang gang on the front in Japanese. Oh, is that what that says? Yeah, says I was gang wondering gang. what it said. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Dude, it says so, gang uh, gang. That's a tribute to the fans, you know, yeah. the, the blog, you know? Um, so that's, you know, that's for, for y'all. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to tie everything together into one thing, and I'm really excited with how it turned out. You that, guys killed it. That's yeah. sick. No, you crushed it too. I I don't know. Like Danny's probably gonna. I'm gonna make Danny work hard to get this up, so it might not be launched by the time. But we're hyping it up now. Everyone's gonna wonder what it is. But at the end, I know Danny did some slow motion. Oh, he did some six. So maybe we'll do a sneak peek at the end of the vlog. Toss some B-roll. Right at the end of the podcast. Toss some B-roll. Toss the B-roll at the end, baby. Let's yeah. see it. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. then, so when you're not playing paintball, and uh -huh. you're you're posting a lot, you're gaming. Yeah, I feel like I see you. I see you gaming a lot. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and I've seen you gaming with some pro gamers. Uh, you played yeah. a tournament with uh, uh, Super Evan. Yeah. yeah, that's his name. Yeah, so tell us more about that. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. So like in my free time, I like to to game, you know. And I think during COVID is kind of when like the first pandemic, when we were, there's no paintball season, is when I kind of fell into the gaming love. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the reason is, is like I, I needed something when paintball wasn't there. I needed like an outlet to be competitive. Right. Yep. And I've always been into gaming, but I, I like I didn't want to get into it because I knew what it would start. I'd be addicted to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like as of lately, I've been streaming, you know, like I've been trying to stream like every day of the week um, for a few hours. And uh, I actually got asked by Hitch from Optic. Hitch. That's who I saw you playing yeah. with. Hitch. You well, did so, a or you did some sort of tournament that Hitch threw or something. So I was actually at a clinic uh, with Yaya in South Carolina. Yeah. And then he hit me up and he goes, hey this Monday, you know, I need you to fly back or like if you want to play this tournament and this tournament had like Dr. Disrespect. Oh, did it? Huge names. Right? Shout out Doc. Meta yeah. Threads. We make his merch. Doc's a beast, dude. Shout out to Doc. Um, dude, so he's yeah, the best. It honestly was a, it was a mix of like um, content creators mm -hmm. and then like cracked players. That's oh. what they call them. Like the pro players. Oh, okay. Are, like really good. Um, and I, I follow the the scene as far as the war zone scene, Call of Duty. Was, yeah. You know, I don't want to get too into it. <laughs> but um, I remember I had to like, I was delayed at an airport for like nine hours. And then I was like, I didn't fly home and get in until like three or 4 a.m. No way. The next day. And then I had to play the tournament at like 10 a.m. the next day. But like I changed my flights and I did whatever I could after that clinic to, yeah. to get there because it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So uh, How just, what? just to be able to see that other side, like to be in ex like with those experienced guys, that's the same thing as taking a division four paintball player and, and then just putting them in the pro division. Yeah. It was crazy. It's crazy that, I mean, for the short time that all of a sudden you start to game, now all of a sudden you're in like with the dude, big dogs that insane, fast, dude. Isn't dude. that crazy? Like you just, you were just grinding. Dude. And, that, and like, honestly, like to be able to do that and experience that is just like a, it was like a, a milestone in like my life because it was like, wow, I was able to take a, um, you know, a completely different, um, like sport or whatever you want, you know, like esport. Yep. Um, a, a different path and like try to like get up there, you know? Yeah. And you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm not going to pursue that and be, become a professional gamer, but like, it's just really cool to be able to do that. Um, something I love and enjoy on the side as well as, um, you know, when now the paintball's full up and running again to be able to do that now, you know? Yeah. Did that, did that little taste, uh, in the big leagues right there make you want to push it some more or, I mean, or, or just, you were like, okay, I kind of felt it. It's all good. I, I would, I mean, I definitely loved it 
go do it again. You yeah. Know? Um, but to dedicate my life to it, I'd have to stop playing paintball. Like, yeah. I feel like these guys play eight hours a day, all seven day. days a week. Right? Cassidy like, tells I, me he because he does the Cloud Nine guys. Yeah. And yeah. he he's with Shroud a lot. Yeah. He's like all oh, he does is play. That's what I'm when saying. When he wakes up till he falls asleep, dude. He's like they're monsters. It's it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a job in itself. Dude. Yeah. It's job and the beauty is the job is like you just wake up and go to your yeah setup. You know. I love it. Yeah. So. That was fun. I mean, it was a good time. I still play it occasionally. I play with some of the boys that, you know, play paintball. Yeah. One of the Latin Saints, Silos. I, him and I hey. play like every day. So. Oh, so you play with Silos a lot. Yeah, him and I play like every day. Sick. Normally like when I'm streaming, but yeah. Nice, dude. That's yeah. so sick. It's what? Cool. So um, uh, we were talking before this about uh, traveling with paintball gear. I just wanted to, I wanted to run Dave back. You were like, because we were messing around. Like, I was like, you got to take your egg off before you're fine. You're like, you'd be so surprised. How many people don't realize those little things that you got to do? Honestly, I made a YouTube video about like traveling tips. Oh, did you? That, did it do good? Yeah. And the tank, taking the reg off the tank yeah. was like a huge thing. Like I had a bunch of comments and messages. Really? Saying, like, wow. Like I didn't, like that's how you do it. And like, to be honest, when I grew up, I didn't really even properly know how to take the tank off the reg. The, 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 I'm not going to say any names of the stores, but the, the paintball store by me would charge you to take your reg off. No way. I swear. What a heist. It's a heist. <laughs> what a heist, boys. It's a heist. Uh, so like um, what I would do is I would take the tank and don't do this at home, but maybe. Would you bang it? I would just slam no, it, on the, Dude, I slam the, it on the concrete. Bang, bang, bang. And it's so terrible. Oh, it's for horrible. Like nipple, but yeah. like, I mean, I, I still do it till this day if I have to. Yeah, that's what I do too. <laughs> you know? But so don't do it. Don't do it, boys. It's not good for your tank if you guys take really good care of your gear. But Yeah, it's crazy though because you know how much you travel and you're going overseas and all that stuff. That right. A lot of these kids, we don't realize, you know, aren't traveling very much and don't realize just the basic things that you need to do when you're traveling yeah. to go play paintball. Yes, and that's, uh, that's definitely one of them because you'll get your tank taken. And I don't know how many times, countless, that some, well, some guy on our team forgot to do it. And then, Have you lost your tank? No, but one time in Canada, right? Yeah. This is a crazy story. Okay, so we had these Houston Heat-themed tanks, right? It's yeah. just heat on them, right? So one time in Canada, we were in the lounge waiting for our flight, and we were going up to Europe, and uh, I got uh, over the loudspeaker. It goes, Ronnie D's on, um, please uh, report to this, you know, whatever gate. And I went to the gate. That's and when you know you're in trouble. Me, dude, they pulled me into a room, right? In this room, there was a TV. And it was a TV, and on the TV was a gear bag and a security TSA agent. So I'm sitting with a TSA agent, Right. Yeah. Like me and the TSA agent. And then there's a, uh, a TSA agent with my gear bag <laughs> and they go, do you give us permission to go through your bag? We just need to look through it. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Goes to the bag, finds like the paintball gun. Right. Yeah. Like all these, all these things. And he's looking at them and he's like, okay, like, you know, this is illegal. This can't go through. And we're like, I've been traveling like the past te- like month with this stuff. That's not, it's not illegal. Right. <laughs> and like, there was a language barrier cause they were like French Canadian. Yeah. And, and I was like, no, it's fine. Like, don't worry. It's everything's good. So then like the guy like on the camera, like drops my gun, what? Like, picks it back up. And I'm like, well, you just dropped my gun. Dude. <laughs> well, like I can't do anything about it. Cause it's just a TV. Right. Yeah. So he's like, sorry. And then <laughs> he picks up my tank. Right. And he goes, this can't go through. And I go, why is the reg on it? The reg's off. Oh, okay. Right. So you did it and, right. And they go, well, because, uh, you know, it's a compressed tank and we go, no, the regulator's off. So it's just a cylinder. Yeah. Like it's not anything. It's just like having a cup. You yeah. Know? a metal cup and then he goes no 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 and the guy over on the tv goes uh it says heat on it right and then the lady goes yeah there's heat inside of it so you can't (laughs) take this through and i go oh my god i'm freaking out right now because my flight's about to board in like 30 minutes and i'm I'm arguing with them about my tank yeah and i'm like no it's not so then i had to call like someone else on our team to like help me explain yeah because they weren't having it no So Ryan Smith came through and he's explaining it and trying to get all technical with it. And we're just sitting there arguing. And then they finally like, like the guy goes like, I don't know how it got resolved, but like the guy like put it back in. He's like, okay, you're good. But the fact that he was just like, there's heat on it. And then she goes, there's heat inside of it. It's there's more like heat. It's hot. And I'm like, no, it's not. I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah, And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to be able to get through with any of my gear. Dude, there's always weird paintball stories like that. I, I had one that was really good like that where uh, me and Howard were going to a street ball event. Yeah. And on the way back, the, when we were at the tournament, at the event, they gave us all these smoke grenades. Yeah. And we were throwing them and having a good time. And we were rushing because we were late to get to the airport. Uh-huh. And I had two in there. And just like you said, smoke grenades in your bag. Yeah. But I, we were in a rush and I'm just trying oh, to get up and we're trying yeah, to get to the plane. Course. And I hear on the last week, you said, <laughs> Mark Crescent, come to the front, Mark Crescent. All of a sudden, five guys with suits, no. cops, uh, it's like uh, military people. Oh, they go, man. listen, we just found a grenade <laughs> on the airplane in your bag. 
you're oh, done. Dude. You're going to jail. I'm like, a grenade? I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I'm, I play paintball and I'm trying to explain the paintball. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. like, all right, let's go get the bag. They open the bag. I go, oh, I'm thinking they, there was like a real grenade in there. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I like, we were just at a paintball thing as a smoke grenade. Mm-hmm. And they're looking at it. They're like, well, do you know what this thing would do under the plane if the smoke grenade even goes off? The whole cabin would get smoked out. Oh, my God. They wouldn't God. be able to see. And then I'm like, yeah. I had to like, he's like, you're on a no fly list, this, that, no. that, that. They said they were going to. But I don't know what happened. All I know is that they, we missed that flight. They did like a crazy background check. That's on me. why you weren't at World Cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and finally they let me through, but yeah. it was like a whole thing. So yeah. you really got to check your stuff. It's because sketchy, yeah. With paintball stuff, it's just weird. You know, they, first off, these people don't see this stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. But then, it, it, especially if you're playing like scenario paintball, the smoke grenade, and yeah. I didn't realize it was under there, it almost it almost got me arrested. <laughs> you know, that gives me a good check. I'm going to do a checklist video. Of, Seriously. Of like, Exactly what you need to do for to pack for yeah. your 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 trips for paintball. Yeah, I don't, think that's huge. Don't put smoke grenades in there. No, no <laughs> smoke grenades. Yeah, and don't get a get a, get a tank that says heat on it. Yeah, don't do that either. <laughs> give give us the one twos with the vlog. How's everything going with the vlog? I know you've been you've been cranking the vlog for like how long now? Oh, like man. you're like and since 2017 is when I went hard at it. 17, you started cranking on it. Yeah, and like. Uh, Honestly, like the last year was kind of difficult because it was hard for content, right? Because you're not traveling as much. Well, like, yeah, especially the pandemic year. Yeah. That was difficult. That was difficult. Um, so like, I don't know, as of like, uh, I don't know, like four or three, three or four months ago, I started getting burnt out. Like I really did. Because it started getting repetitive, right? It was the same type yeah. of content, the, you know, the, the travel vlog, the event vlog. So it's my responsibility, though, to like find new ways to make content. Yeah, switch and, it up. Yeah. And as of lately, I've been... And then back on it, like hard. That's sick. Yeah. That's why uh, it's with you saying that too, you know, we did the vlogs for so long with Cassidy and stuff. Right. But like to do like this style, which still goes on YouTube. Sure. It's like a fresh, like a... Br- uh, something new. Yeah, yeah, something new. It's like so fresh. Like I'm yeah. excited to go do it because, you know, you've done the whole vlog. Then we got into the field. We've done the internet. We've done all that. Yes. Done the slow motion and all that. Everything. So this is like a cool little like... got me, up. Got me excited yeah, again. Yeah, it reignites the Yeah, and now it's reigniting me to want to even do the other style of vlog, which I love doing too. Yes. But I just needed to switch it up a little bit. And now I'm like, let's go. Let's fly as many people as we can get in here and rock and roll with oh, this thing. That's it, so man. I feel you on that. Turn and burn. Too. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I realized something that like, there's a lot of diminishing return when you spend a lot of time editing instead of uploading. Yeah. And I think uh, Gary Vee says it well, it's speed versus quality and speed always wins. Yeah. Just crank it out. Dude, you put out, if you put out five pieces of content versus one piece of like really edited content, you're never going to get your return on that one piece. Of no. Content, no matter how dope it is. Yeah. You know? Like you could spend like six hours on an edit and like you'll get appreciated by people like Danny Lincoln, Quitman, you know, verbal. You'll get appreciated by the guys who see the, the edit and the grind. But like the for the mass people, you know, like it's just gonna it, it's just gonna scroll. You know, they're yeah. gonna see it, like, like it, scroll. Oh, right? whatever. It's like the dopest edit Danny spent like nine hours on of his one right. minute. Like, hey, blink next. That's what I'm saying. Like, what, dude? So like, if, <laughs> if Marky's out here, if Marky's out here putting out six pieces of content, Danny's putting out here one, right? Yeah. They're gonna see Marky's one, then they're gonna see Danny's one. Yeah. Then they're gonna see Marky's five. Yeah. And they're gonna just it's gonna get more traction. Hundred so percent. You're completely right. You just gotta keep it flowing. Yeah. And the difficulty is it's like when you're a one man army, like it's it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in Chicago and you're not traveling as much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I have to recycle footage. Yeah. Whatever it is. But you were doing, you were adding like gaming stuff to it at some point or were you not? Yeah, I was just doing gaming stuff for the yeah. content. I mean, I, I like. Or you had a new channel for that. Was that? I, I did a channel. Um, well, so I have three YouTube channels. Oh, do you? But like, I, I don't, you, I don't really upload too much on the other ones. Uh-huh. I did. One of them was, is Ronnie Dizon, which is my normal channel. Yep. And then Rondon Dizon, which is the gaming stuff. And yep. then uh, I did more Ronnie Dizon or more Rondon Dizon. And the, I was like a tech channel. I was like doing like reviews on tech stuff, but Sick. I don't know. I didn't, I, it's, it's diff, that's, that's even harder now to keep up with all this. Yeah. There's so many different outlets. Yeah. Now. It's crazy. YouTube now, TikTok. TikTok's been popping. Yeah, dude. YouTube's popping. Now they just, uh, just. I need to hire a Danny Lincoln, you know? Yeah. I got a Danny in equipment, so it works out well. Yeah, you guys are good. <laughs> Let's you guys go, are boys. It. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've been working with uh, Dylan filmed it. Um, a little bit. Dude, that kid, that kid's good. I showed you some of his stuff, Danny. Yeah, very cinematic. He's yeah, he's very cinematic. Events. I'll show you his stuff again. He's been, uh, his yeah. stuff's dope. Yeah, hopefully yeah. like this season I'm going to be able to get him out some practices. Yeah, you should. And do some stuff. To really start cranking it. Yeah. Me and uh, Yaya were at the paint facility. Nice, yeah. I saw, that. I saw the Instagram yeah. uh, uh, stories and stuff. You guys were yeah. there seeing, checking all the paint balls. Yeah, out. it was sick. And then uh, we got good footage. But um, I was, we were talking about how our paints won World Cup four years in a row. I was just talking to somebody about this, and yeah. I don't know who it was, but it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because you got 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah. Yeah, with Heat, Heat, Dynasty, Dynasty. Exactly. That's crazy. With our paint, with our teams. Yeah. It's amazing. You should buy HK. Yeah. How How... Like, cause you get to shoot the paint or you, sh- at least that world cup right? How, or any of the events, 
Yeah. The paint shoot's pretty good, yeah? The paint's phenomenal. Yeah, that's, that's what... phenomenal. So I'm trying to explain to the people, baby. I don't think they get it, you know? <laughs> that's I mean, what I'm the, saying. The, I don't think they get how much time and effort we put in to make sure it's a great And the numbers don't paintball. lie. The numbers don't lie. Mm-mm. Like you just said, that's four World Cups in a row. That's right. The numbers don't lie. They never lie, baby. Look at Fort. Fort's it's over there. Back to back to back to back, Look baby. Fort. The numbers Fort's don't lie. If you guys don't know, we're in the... We're in the <laughs> for the people not on YouTube, we're in the HK Army offices... But like literally like five, not even three feet away is Fort just peeking over his monitors. We got Fort to our right left. Now. We got Kenny to Kenny our right, right. Building, building websites. We got Danny's office over here taking yeah. photos. Jay's over there designing. Dude, he got it all. You, you get the, the full whole, experience out here. Full, like, that's what they call it, huh? Yeah, the that's full experience. That's what the full it's experience. Cool. Um, what I've been doing now at the end, which I thought was really cool, I, I have some questions that um, people want me to ask you. No. Okay. It's over. <laughs> Okay, run it. Okay, let's go. So this one is saying, this one we're going to do here. What is Ronnie's favorite place that paintball has taken him to? California. No, let's go. <laughs> You've been to so many good places, yeah. overseas and not. What, what's, what's the best place that you can remember that okay, paintball defi- has taken you? Define best, though. What do you mean by best? Like, it's uh, up to you. And I, yeah, it's a hard, because that's very subjective. I think people will like to hear about some uh, overseas foreign honestly travel i'll tell you what a very beautiful place that i think is like i don't know I, a lot of people don't realize it but prague is one of the most beautiful cities i've ever been prague to. yeah i i love that city like brandon told me a lot of fun stories of him and yeah yeah in prague. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, prague gets crazy but no honestly like just the city itself the whole city's like cobblestone yeah. So, like, if you have bad ankles, you know, that's not the place. You're in trouble out there. Right, exactly. So, make sure you guys put those I, rise straps on. But I never got to go. It's it's that dope, huh? Yeah, it's really cool. Honestly, like, it's one of the places that I'd like to go back just to, like, enjoy, you know? Yeah. Because the, the first time I went, in, like, I was like, this is sick. The second time I stayed another, like, four or five days. Oh, like, did you? Yeah, with some of the guys. It was sick. really cool. So, I think Prague's one of the coolest cities, like, overseas. Yep. Um, I mean, Paris was... Paris is dope. When I went, when I got to go, you guys won and it got wild at the end. (laughs) Paris is crazy. Um, so did you ever get to do any of the world cup Malaysia's out Malaysia? No, but I went to Thailand. Oh, okay. I did Thailand. Did you like that event? Yeah. And then Oliver came out of the forest. Did he? I swear. I am not even kidding. Wait, what? Oliver just like came out, like pulled up on a scooter with, (laughs) listen. Oliver like pulled out of a scooter at a Thailand. Me and Marcelo are playing this event together and Oliver pulls up in a scooter. Uh, he has, uh, headbands on both of his arms. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. Like walks walks in and the entire place stops and looks at him and he's just like like headbands on each arm like just all over like basically hanging. What? Yeah, and he's like pick one. <laughs> I was like this is the craziest thing I've ever seen, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I never heard that story. And then I never saw him again. And then he vanished. He just, back into the forest. He just disappears with a cloud of smoke. That is so sick. Yeah. Cool. So that's rad. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um why did you choose to join Houston Heat over any other team? So whenever you got on Heat, I'm assuming you had other options. What? Why Heat? Okay, so um, I got on Heat in 2012, and I was one of the original members. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in 2014 is when they um, they cut me. Oh, you were cut? Yeah, I was cut from Heat. Oh, okay. 2014, because they brought the Russians back. They brought uh, Ross, Mishka, Sergey, and Brennikov. Oh, Brennikov was yeah. on the squad then, yeah, too. Yeah, for like a year or two. Um, so they let you go. I let me go in 2014. And who'd you play with during that? Aftershock. Oh, okay. Then you went to Aftershock. Yes. And then that's when I played on Aftershock uh, for two years, 2016 or 15 and 16. And then 2016 came around and, um, uh, you know, I, I actually, I was working out a few deals with, with a few different teams. Yeah. You know? And honestly, I ruled out Heat. I was like, I don't think it's going to happen. That's like, because honestly, I'll be honest, I don't think Heat's the type of team. Um, I think that's the type of team that contacts you, you know? Yeah. Like you, it's, it's. You know, it's a tight knit group, you know? Yeah. Um, You're all super close. And, and at the same time, I'm like, okay, like they got rid of me. Why would they want me back? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, push came to shove. I got a call, you know, from uh, Chad Yeah Boucher. Yeah, yeah. And Getting he, his boy back. He was like, you know, we're working on some things. And if you want to be back with the boys, you know, uh, let's make some phone calls and make something, something yeah. happen. It's history from there. Hell yeah. But, um, you know, I was I was working on some stuff with some other teams. Yeah. You know, if, if honestly, like three days if it was like three days late or something, like it was the difference between like a few days. Yeah, you would have been somewhere. Or else. I would have been locked in with someone else. Yeah, but aren't you so glad it was Heat? And, and you know, a lot of people ask me this question: Why did I pick the team that got rid of me? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like that's. And, and I looked at it like this: I'm like, okay, like if I'm gonna sit here and be spiteful yep. about it, you know, like it's only gonna just be a longer grudge and 
and something in me said like this story can be completed if I come back, work my ass off and like win an event with this team. Yeah. You know, it'd be a dope story. Oh yeah. And, um, if you look at it in terms of legacy, I'm like, dude, I, I, I wanted to come back and do that, you know? Fuck yeah. So that's awesome. Do you think, um, and, and it's not, and like what sucked was like, I love the guys on the team before, you know, we went separate ways and Sergeant and I've talked many times, you know, it's, there was a lot of reasons uh, outside of my playing abilities, you know, and I was just very immature at the time. I yeah. was young, yeah. you know, so when he dismissed me, it was because I needed to grow up a little bit, Yeah, you know, and he saw that I grew up in those two years. So, yeah, you know, we came back together and the boys are back. The boys are back, baby. Do you think when they let you go and off the squad then, didn't that, do you think that put a little fuel under the, under your, oh, under your ass to make you start like, yo, I got to get more serious and I got to really put the grind in? Yeah. Like the, it probably helped a little bit. The thing was like the structure that Heat was in, it was so um, strict in terms of like the way the team was run that when I went to a team like Aftershock was a little bit more free and loose. Yeah. I still tried to implement that structure. So it was difficult because mm -hmm. my brain was still locked in there. Yeah. So then having to go from that to, um, you know, a structured team to a very unstructured team. Yeah. And then now I get to go back to the structure that I thought I was used to. Right. Right. But then when I came back, Ryan Smith was a coach. So everything was still different. So it was like all these things were evolving and yeah. I was growing at the same time. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it lit a fire in my ass to work really hard. Yeah. You know? And I still work really hard because any, you know, like you're not given tomorrow, you know, so no. every day I am grateful that I still play yeah. this team, you know? Well, you're looking good on the field and, and busting your ass. So I'm stoked that you're still on the squad, baby. Let's go. Aren't you playing this weekend? Are yeah, we're, we're playing at seven, man. The boys are back. Hostel kids are back. Jay, hey, yeah, yeah, it's playing. Yeah. We didn't know you were coming out. We only get one pro, but. That's okay. You heard it here first. I think we sneak you on as Kenny, <laughs> as Rosenberg. Kenny Rosenberg. Yeah, <laughs> you don't take your goggle off. And I swear <laughs> to God, they will not know. Bobby Vilas, if you see this, I'm sorry, but we're cheating you. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a scandal, boys. It's a scandal, boys. It's always a scandal at HK Army. Yeah, we're playing. We're playing seven man. Jay's, Jay's on the team. Nobby's on the team. Dude, I'm gonna be hanging out. I'm, I'm gonna, on the team. You're gonna I'll be there, right? I'll film it, dude, dude. Film it. Vlog it. Let's just get nuts. Let's Danny's go. gonna be out there filming. We're gonna have the one wheel out there. Nice. Danny and I are just gonna be kicking it then. Yeah. Have you tried the one wheel? Uh, I tried my friends. Not for me. Don't don't break your legs before the season starts. Dude. Not for me. I broke my ankle on the thing. It's That's not my thing. Yeah. Don't do it. No, I need a skateboard. Like a normal <laughs> skateboard. I don't need one wheel. I need four. Yeah. Okay. A couple more questions. Um, I like this one, mm -hmm. Ronnie, how can we improve the refs in the industry? Do you have any ideas on that? Any thoughts on that? Do you think, think the refs are good? Do you not think they're good? Here's the issue. I think, I think referees have the hardest job in the sport and they didn't get paid the least. Right. Yeah. They're standing out there all day long, longer than us, you yeah. know, through every single match. So yeah, they're going to make a hiccup on a call for sure. So what do you expect? You know, yeah. but like, let me expect you to stand out there for four days in a row on your feet. From 6 a.m. to 5 a.m. till yeah. the sun goes down. Those guys love paintball more than we do. You for know sure. I mean? for, so for them to do that is like, you know, yeah, sometimes there's some, I mean, like every sport, sometimes there's some con consistencies that are, you know, off this event or on this event, you know, but I think they're doing as much and as best as they can. Yeah, it sucks because there were situations at World Cup where, you know, in my opinion, I think as a competitor, we got shafted by a situation mm -hmm. by one call, but if I sit here and dwell on that, I'm literally never going to get anything done. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, so it is what it is. Just move forward. You know, yeah. that's the way it's going to be. I think, um, I, I don't know the intricacies of how they train the refs and stuff like that, you mm -hmm. know, but it's just, it, it's just, it's a very hard position. Super hard, especially paintball. And even look at like the NBA, you know, the NBA games are what a few hours yeah. and the refs, that's all they're on that thing. So I'm saying they're there, dude, these guys four are there times the, for like four 14 times. hours on yeah. the field. Dude, you're going to be tired. It's I, I feel for the refs. So I, I'm, I'm exact. I agree with everything you just yeah. said. That's why maybe they need to rotate them. Yeah. What if they had a second shift crew? Or I know a it's a lot shift. of heads. What if yeah. it's three shifts? Yeah. But I, then you're fresh during the whole time right. during all the matches. You're not burnt. You know what I'm saying? Or what if they did like, okay, like shift one's Marky shift two is me. And then shift three is you again. Yeah. Right. So and you then, get that break. And then the next day I'll be shift one, you be shift two. And then I'll be shift. I don't know if they do that. Right? I, I don't think they do. And Excel, you listening? Let's I don't know. Go. I don't know if that's possible <laughs> or if that's something that would help the freshness of the referee, but yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a great answer. Yeah. Let's do one more. Um, sure. Ronnie, how did you go pro? How did you turn professional? Do you remember? <laughs> um, okay. In 2011, I was in division. I was a division two paintball player and uh, I was playing on distortion at the time. Distortion. Which Randy Smith ran at the time with his son. And yeah. Like, uh, but at the same time, he was also um, um, running Aftershock's uh, NPPL team. 
They're seven man team. Mm -hmm. So like uh, Rennick and Bad Boys Toys was in charge of like you know like the NXL, and then Randy Smith had his foot in the door with them uh, by using their you know their pro spot, but at the same time like running the team um, for the for the seven mans. Vegas comes around 2011, and mind you, I've been just watching pro paintball that whole year, right? I just won World Cup and Division Two with Distortion. I just won the CXBL, which is like the Canadian X. Yeah, that league was dope. There was a lot of good players out there. Yeah, so we won those at the same time. And then I got a call like a week later saying, hey, do you want to go play pro with Aftershock in Vegas from Randy? He's like, hey, just get your flight. Everything else is taken care of. Play your best, you know? Yeah. So then I like, I was like, okay, like, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Why not, right? Yeah. So we went out there. And then this is when Cassidy got that clip of Mouse wiping that yeah, motor hit. It was the cleanest, the most iconic, the cleanest wipe, wipe hit I've ever seen in my entire life, dude. Right. Yeah, shout out to Mouse. <laughs> shout out to Mouse for that, dude. I Insane. can't. It's a heist. It's a scandal, boy. It is a scandal here at Ace Jeremy. Uh, so like, that's when he did that, and we ended up winning. Yeah. Now think about like playing Division Two all year long, watching Dynasty, and then you play them in the finals under the lights. I mean, I've said this story and multiple you won. times. One. Then I won. Then the next year comes around. And that's when Houston Heat was like, a f like something that was worked on, I guess, all year, finally coming into fruition. So, yeah. And then that's when I got the call to be a part of that. When you when you won that Vegas event, who yeah. else was on that team? Who else was on that aftershock team? Was Sloviak? Uh, yeah, it was. I saw Sloviak was rocking. I remember it was rocking an HK, HK sweatband. Army sweatband. The green Sloviak. One. Shout out Sloviak. Yeah. And then you were on the team. Who else was on that team? Was anyone else? It was me, Ryan Smith, Ryan Smith, LJ Woodley. Yeah. Oh, LJ Woodley. That's who was on the team. Drew Templeton, Cody Makowski, Drew. Chris Sosin. Uh, Nick Sloviak and then Max Pong, which was a dif distortion. That guy. team was popping. Yeah, I mean, it was just like basically aftershock with featuring like a few distortion players. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, and I remember like it just what it didn't feel real. It didn't feel real. Yeah, under the lights. I yeah. did that event. So I loved Vegas. Events. Like what? We beat Impact, Infamous, and then Dynasty to win the like the tournament. That's so dope. Yeah, crazy. that's so sick. Yeah. Did um did you play a lot of seven man before going into that? Yeah, I mean occasionally, but yeah. I didn't play it like a whole like a whole season, right? Yeah, so I was always playing divisional seven mans, and I never won a seven man. And then you just go into the pro event. I don't think so. Win it first. I time. think that was my first seven man win. That's so sick. Yeah, and say yeah, dude. That's because like I, I was at the local field, and I remember my friends were like, "Hey man, if you bunker someone in the pro division, I'm gonna shotgun a beer." <laughs> the first game we played, we played like Seattle Uprising or whatever it was, and I bunkered someone highway. Yeah. And it was like 7 a.m. And my friend, I get it. I come back to the pits. You know how you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get. I second. look at my phone. My friend goes, "Well, it's 7 a.m. and I'm shotgunning a beer. Let's and I'm go. Like, it's gonna be a long <laughs> one, buddy." And then for us to go like, you know, go from like, okay, like aftershock, we're gonna like make it maybe past the prelims, you know. Mm -hmm. And our practice for that tournament was insane. We didn't even really play like anyone. We played like a Division Four or Five team. And we just kind of had fun. Yeah. That's the definition of having fun. Playing that, that is having fun. When you're really having fun and it really, it's not about winning or losing. I swear that's when you always play your best. You just get it's, into the flow. Yeah. The flow is just the flow epic. State, dude. I love it. Yeah. Okay. One last question. Then we're going to let you rock and roll. Cause tomorrow we're going to go, we're going to the shoot some content, content, some Dante. It's, it's non nonstop content. Dante. When the boys are in town, we make the best of it. We came here to work. Yeah, let's go. Um, this is a great question. I like this one. Sure. What player either retired or still playing? Would you love to share the field with? And Oliver. this will be our last question. Oliver, Who? Oliver. Oliver. I don't have to question it. So you like your, you, I've always been an Oliver fan. An Oliver fan. He was kind of the reason why I like got into paintball because of Jawbreaker Three. Uh, that video kind of like inspired me to like chase the dream. Yeah. You know. Um, so Oliver. What, what was it about Oliver that you liked so much? It was the uh, Kenny's taking. Kenny Rosenberg Friday. in the house, baby. Yeah, baby, let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> uh, what about Oliver? Yeah. Let's see. Um, it, it, I mean, a, a lot of people could attest, attest to this. It was his, his heart you know is his drive yeah you know he his ability to bring goosebumps around all the team because of the way he he hypes everyone up yeah know? so um i think uh having never played alongside of him always playing against them yeah it'd been cool to experience that yeah he's such a good leader um when we first sponsored dynasty he was already um gone he was on ironman and then he came back yeah. And it's crazy. Greenspan's a beast. He's that an was, animal. That was the year that I played him in the final. Oh, was it? Yeah. 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 So Greenspan's obviously amazing, right? Yeah, for sure. It, but when Ryan was just in charge of the team and he was like the head guy, yeah. it was nothing. Like when Oliver came back, oh my God, the well, way that he could bring people his, together. His energy. He made you believe. Yeah. You could go out there and you would, he made, no matter who you were playing, you could have been playing Spartans. He made you believe you're going to smash them. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and it works because they would win. Oliver came back and they were winning nonstop. I think a huge bit of it has to do with the paintball media at the time because the media really covered him. 
Yeah. Think about it. Like but they covered him because he was good. Well, he was good, yeah. right? And he would do awesome, crazy things, and he would hype the team up, right? Yeah. But like, if you think about it, at the time that Dynasty in like 2004, 2005, right? There was like some sort of contract where they couldn't film the NXL. So like, Trauma, Philly, all those guys really didn't get much mm. limelight, right? In Legacy at the time, you're on Legacy. Yeah. So you, you didn't have a lot of media. No surrounding you guys because like i always wanted to watch like kenny play yeah i know and the only clips we have are like of equipment or whoever back in the day there's nothing that's what i'm saying so like to think about it like that i wonder what it would have been if they would have followed y'all at the same time the the whole yeah career, right yeah because because that was kind of just like in the shadows yeah you know and it was crazy it was so competitive mm -hmm. you know so um i think that attributed to it i think the media really harnessed a lot of his um, shine at that time. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah, Oliver Lang voice. All right. Like Oliver, yeah. Thank you for coming on, Ronnie. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm excited to uh, film some more content with you tomorrow. And then uh, we're going to be at the Seven Man. And then I think, what are you going to do? You're going to, you have some other fun activities going on? I think Sunday we're going to be uh, mishmashing with a bunch of different pro players and playing. Oh, you're, you're going to go I out know there's a, there's a big practice out here. Uh, oh, sick. Yeah, with like Diesel and I think uh, aftermath. I don't oh, know. Diesel's going to be out here. I think so. That's, oh, that's sick. Verbal's here. Oh, sick. Yes, oh, okay. Yeah. So Diesel's going to be out here aftermath, and then you and Chad are going to go jump in and get some grinding. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, boys. We'll shout out Ronnie D's on. Let's go. Hey, Tom, where does subscribe one more time to your YouTube? YouTube.com slash Ronnie D's on. Follow me on Instagram, uh, Rondon D's on, and uh, on Twitch, Rondon D's on. Let's go, baby. Let's go. This is Mr. H, the Full Experience Podcast. Thank you, Ronnie. Let's get it. Thanks for having me. We out of here.